Hey hi everyone how are you In this video we are going to solve the lead code problem of the day and the problem is count good triplets Well in this problem we are given an input and we have a array okay and this is a array of integers We need to find out how many good triplets can we have in this particular array Now the question is what is a triplet and what is a good triplet So basically three numbers can be called as a triplet okay So you can choose any three numbers out of your array for example you can choose 0 1 1 or you can choose 3 0 and 9 okay they don't need to be continuous you just need to choose any three numbers and they are a triplet now they will be called as a good triplet when the difference in the first two numbers is less than equal to a the difference in the next two numbers is less than equal to b and the difference between the first and the third number is less than equal to c now mathematically we can say that we need to choose three indexes okay out of your array you will have to choose three indexes let's say you call those index as i j and k now the relationship between i j and k is i should be less than j and j should be less than k okay so if you are choosing three numbers let's say 1 2 and 3 then this is going to be i this is going to be j and this is going to be k okay now you cannot call this one i and this one j okay because the lowest index has to be i then the middle index has to be j and the last index has to be k okay there is a certain relationship between i j and k and now what are good triplets first of all you choose triplets i j and k and then you will have to check the condition this particular condition the difference between the first two numbers that is arr of i and j has to be less than equal to a arr of a and k has to be less than equal to b and arr of k and i has to be less than equal to c a b and c are given in the question itself so in simple words you don't need to get confused choose any three indexes call the first one as i second one as j and third one as k see the difference between the first two numbers they should be less than equal to a see the difference between the next two numbers that should be less than equal to b and see the difference between the first and third number that should be less than equal to c if you are able to find a triplet like this then you will count it So in this particular array, the output is four. Okay, what are those four triplets? Those are this three zero one. That's one triplet. Then you can take this three, take this zero, and take this one, right? And that's another triplet. So one and one, you have got two triplets. And you can say that we have zero one one as another triplet because if you see the difference between zero and one is one, right? That's less than equal to a, which is seven. The difference between one and one is zero. Okay, when and when I'm talking about difference, I'm actually talking about the absolute difference. Okay. So difference will not be negative; it will always be positive because I am talking about the absolute difference. So the difference between the next two numbers has to be less than equal to b, which is two. So the difference is zero, which is okay, valid. Now the difference between the first and the third number is one. That is less than equal to c. That is three. So in this case, zero one one is a triplet. Okay. So we have got like one. Then we have got three zero and one two triplets. Then we have got zero one one. That is three triplets. And then we can say three one one. That's also another triplet. Okay. So we have got four triplets. And apart from that, if you try to take any three numbers, like you can say, okay, I will take zero one and seven. This is not valid because the difference between the last two numbers has to be less than equal to b. B is two. Here the difference is six, right? The second number is one. The third number is seven. Difference is six. That is not less than equal to b, right? So in this case, this is not valid. So this is how you can find all your good triplets, and then in the return you can give the output. Now let me show you how can you solve this using brute force. And why I am telling you to solve this using brute force? That's because the constraints in this problem is too small and it is marked as easy. So let me show you the solution. That's going to be really easy to understand. First of all, you can just assign a variable result that is going to be equal to zero initially. Then run a loop for the index i that will start from zero. Run a loop for index j that will start from i plus one. That is, and that's because we need to make sure that j has to be more than i. Then run another loop inside the j loop which will run from j plus one to the end, and that's because k has to be more than j. So this will ensure that our relationship i less than j and j less than k will be true. And then you can check the condition that if the absolute difference between the element at index i and element at index j is less than equal to a, then the second condition that and the absolute difference of arr of j and arr of k has to be less than equal to b. and the third condition absolute difference of arr of i and arr of k that is the first and the third element has to be less than equal to c and if it is true you can count it right result plus equal to 1 and you can just come out of this loop and that's the complete solution you can just return the value right now this problem can be solved using this approach and this is actually a good solution for this particular problem but let us try to optimize our solution we are currently using the time complexity of n cube see in this particular approach what we need to do we need to create all the pairs of valid values of index j and index k so in this question we have index i j and k right we have to take the values of index i index j and index k so if we can create all the pairs of index j and index k then we just need to find what are the valid values of index i which i can take with my pair and count it if this is our input and this is our a b and c then the output is 4 in this case right now let us see how we can utilize a prefix array to count this in the question it is given that the maximum value we will have in our array will be less than or equal to 1000 and more than or equal to 0 so the range of our values are from 0 to 1000 right So what we are doing is we are creating a prefix that will have one thousand and one items. All will be zero initially. Okay. So basically, this array will look something like this: zero, 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 up to zero, one thousand and one times. This is index zero. This is index one. This is index two, and this will go till index thousand. Now, what does this particular array or prefix array is denoting right now? 
it says that if for a particular index I have a value of zero, it means that till a particular point when I am looping in my array or when I am trying to create a pairs, I have got or I have seen zero number of ones in my array. For example, if I am at this point, then at this point I have not seen any one, right? So at index one I will have a value of zero. But at this point, at index one, the value is going to be two. That is what we are trying to create. How this is going to help us is let us say we are trying to create this pair nine and seven later on. And this nine and seven needs a one as an i. So basically we are creating a triplet, right? The second element is nine, third element is seven. Then we will find what are the valid values of i based on the a, b, and c. And if the value which we need to fill here is having a range of zero to five, then we will try to see how many elements do we have till five. So based on that, we don't need to run another loop to check what are the valid values of i. We will keep storing those kind of values. Okay. So let me actually try to explain you this. Now what will happen when you are running the loop? So what, so what we are going to do is we are going to create all the pair of g and k, right? The second and third element. And the condition is that the absolute bit difference between the second and third element has to be less than equal to b, right? So we will make sure that we are following this condition and we will try to create all the pairs. If the value of k is three, what are the possible values of k? It is only one and one, right? And the reason is the difference between the element has to be less than equal to two. So any other element doesn't satisfy this condition apart from three and one and three and one. So we can say we can form two pair three comma one and three comma one. If the value of j is three, the value of k is one. What is the possible value of i? And there are two conditions. With the first element, the difference has to be seven. That is the value of a. And with the second element, the difference has to be three. That is the value of c, right? So we have two values, seven and three to take care. Now, if this is the condition that the pair is three comma one, then we need to find out what is the possible value of i, right? I will tell you why. If this is j, this is k. See, j and k are indexes, but right now I am referring it to the actual elements which are there in my array. So if this is j and this is k, what is the possible value of i? See, the possible value of i has to be a range. It should have a minimum value and a maximum value, right? That's the range. Now, how can I find what is the minimum value of my i? The minimum value of my i can either be zero. That's the minimum value which is given in the question that our elements cannot be less than zero. Or it can be the difference between this and this. So three minus seven is minus four. And that's because if the value at i is minus five, which is less than this, then the absolute difference between the first and the second element is going to be eight. That's more than allowed difference, right? The allowed difference between the first and the second element is only seven up to seven. So according to this, minus four is the minimum possible value for i. Also, we have one more condition that the difference between the absolute difference between the first and the third element has to be less than or equal to c. So one minus three is minus two. So the difference between k and the c says that according to me, according to k, the value of i cannot be less than minus two. That's according to k because k says that I need the maximum difference of three with you. So if you go anywhere less than this minus two, I will not be satisfied. Okay. So the thing is, we have three possible cases for the minimum value of i. Now we know that it cannot be negative. Okay. And let me tell you one thing. Let's say this is minus three. Okay. With value minus three, if the value of i is minus three, let us say we have negative values in our array. Then with minus three, this value j is fine because their difference is six, right? The absolute difference is six, which is fine. It can have absolute difference till seven, but this will not be fine. Okay. Because their difference is four. The absolute difference is four. We have only three difference allowed. So that is why we need to check for all the three values which are possible as a minimum value for i and take the maximum out of it so that all are satisfied. All the conditions are satisfied. We need to make a good triplet, right? We don't need to make pairs. We need to make good triplets. So that's why all the conditions should be satisfied. So in this case, we need to take the maximum out of it. So these are the three candidates for the minimum value. We need to find the maximum out of it so that all the conditions are satisfied. So we will say the minimum value which is possible for i is zero. If the value of j is three and k is one. And according to the question, the differences has to be seven, two and three. Now, what is the maximum value which is possible for my value i? So it can either be thousand, which is the maximum value given in the question, or it can be three plus seven. That is, this three plus seven. This will be ten, right? Or it can be one plus three. That is four. So we have three candidates again, right? Three candidates for the maximum value of i. Now you will have to take the minimum out of it, and I will tell you the reason. The minimum is four, right? Let's say you don't take the minimum. You take the value five, okay? Then the difference between the first and the second element is two. And we need a difference of less than or equal to seven. Okay, that is fine. But if the value is five, so five and one has a difference of four, and we need a maximum difference of three for with the first and the third element. For all the maximum value candidates, we need to choose the minimum. We got a range of i. I can be from zero to four. Now, what are we trying to do here is we are trying to find what is my possible range of i when the value of my j is three and value of k is one. That is, if this is my pair, what is the possible value? It's from zero to four. And to find the value of this, that is how many elements we have from zero to four, we are going to create a prefix array, right? This prefix array is going to count how many elements we have till now. And these indexes are denoting the actual values or actual range. So when we are looping through, we will keep counting how many elements we have seen till now. And the reason is when you are looping in your element. So if this is your range, when we are looping in our range, 
then at each point we need to update the value of our prefix array that's because the value of i or the value at index i will be the first element so it is going to be that element which we have already seen while exploring the value of j and k right so we are going to keep updating our prefix array and how we will do it let us see so when we see a value of 3 that's the first value in our array right so we found that with 3 the possible pairs are 3 and 1 and 3 and 1 now it needs the range of values of i as 0 and 4 right so before 3 have you seen any element which is from 0 to 4 that's the question because it has to be before 3 right it should not be after 3 or it should not be after 3 that's because if 3 is your j your i will have to be before it okay so in first case we are not going to get any triplet but what we are going to get is we are going to update the values of our prefix array that's because if we have seen a value which is equal to 3 right so we are going to update all the values at index 3 and after it and set it as 1 how this is going to help us i will tell you okay first of all let us focus on the prefix array if we see a value of 0 we are going to increase the count from index 0 till the last okay that's the thing we need to do and why we are doing it let me show you let us say we got a pair okay we got a pair 1 comma 1 okay when we will get it when the value of j is at this point and k is at this point at this point we need to know what's the range of my i right so if the value of j is 1 value of k is 1 the range of i has to be from 0 and 3 and that's because the minimum value possible for i is either 0 j minus 7 and k minus 3 so that's minus 6 and minus 4 their maximum is 0 right so we need to find the maximum of all our minimum candidates and the minimum of all our maximum candidates so maximum values possible are 1000 8 and 4 8 and 4 because 1 plus 7 and 1 plus 4 right so our range is from 0 to 4 so it is not 0 to 3 so let me remove it and make it 0 to 4 so what it is saying is if our possible pair is 1 and 1 then in this case the value of i will be from 0 to 4 now how many 0 to 4 values have we already seen that's the question right so if you find how many values have i seen if we are exploring this pair so if we are exploring this pair it means our value of j is at this point so we are going to explore this particular prefix array because we are going to update the prefix array later on right first of all we will see this so what are the possible values of i from 0 to 4 right that is the value can be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 right and that's why if we see a value 0 we are trying to update all the values after it if we see a value 1 we are trying to update all the value after it in our prefix array because how this is going to help us is we have seen a value 3 and we have seen a value 0 right now i don't need to loop back to see do we have a value between this range because i have a prefix array for it the prefix array is storing a value at index number 4 as 2 right that's because it has seen a value 3 so from 3 it has updated all the values it has seen a value 0 so from 0 it has updated all the values so from 0 to 2 it is 1 we have seen one element from the range of 0 to 2 but we have seen two elements from the range 3 to 1001 and there is one important thing to understand if the range is 2 to 9 let us say this is the possible range for your value i so you are not just going to add the prefix value at index 9 but you will also minus the prefix value at index 1 and that is because if you are at index 9 if you are checking at index 9 then it actually denotes how many elements do you have from 0 to 9 right from the starting till 9 i can have 10 elements right but i just need it from 2 right so in that case i can say minus prefix of 1 because this is going to tell you how many elements you have from 0 to 1 let's say you have 3 elements then from 2 to 9 you are going to have 7 elements right so you will have to take a difference but if your range is starting from 0 then in that case you don't need to take a difference because i know that i don't have a value minus 1 right so if the range is from 0 to 4 then in this case i can just say what is the prefix value at 4 minus what is the prefix value of minus 1 now i know that my values are starting from 0 itself right so this will not have any value so i don't need to calculate this so if the range starts from 0 i can just say that get me all the values which i have till 4 right prefix of 4 so i know this is going to be a little bit complex to understand but let us try to see the solution and maybe the solution can help us to understand it more so in this case you need to calculate the n that is the length of our array then we need to create a prefix array prefix is equal to 0 multiplied by 1001 that's the maximum possible number we have in our array and you can see it from here we have some constraints right so this is the maximum number which is possible for your element in your array now let's run a loop for j in the range of n and then for k in the range of j plus 1 till n now i can say if the absolute difference between array of k and an element at index k if it is more than c that means the current pair itself is not valid right j and k should have a difference less than equal to c right so in this case i can just continue from the loop i don't need to do anything and once i am out of this loop what i need to do is the current value of j i have to increase the value i have to increase the count in my prefix array for the current value j so now i can run a loop for num in range and that is going to start from arr of j right and it will go till 1001 now i can say the prefix of num has to increase right so plus equal to 1 and in the end what i am going to do is i can just return the value of result now what if this condition is true what if we are able to create a pair now here is our main logic here we are trying to calculate what is, what's the range of my current value i 
so minimum value which is possible for my current value i is the maximum of three values either zero right or arr of g minus a right this is the first difference we have that's the minimum difference we should have and arr of a minus c that's the minimum difference we have according to a now what's the maximum value possible for our value i that will be the minimum of 1000 and arr of j plus a right now y plus a because this time we are trying to find what is the maximum value which is possible arr of k plus c so once we know the minimum and maximum value we know the range of our elements now in case the minimum value itself is more than the maximum value in case if it happens then we can continue from the loop again that's because the current triplet is not valid now if the minimum value is equal equal to zero we can directly say result is equal to result plus prefix of our maximum range right but if it is not zero then in that case we can say that result is equal to result plus the prefix of maximum value minus the prefix of minimum value right so this is how we are calculating all the possible triplets so we are not actually finding all the triplets we are just finding the count of the triplets and this will be and this is going to be minimum value minus one right so that's the range we are trying to find out and also before we submit the code we need to make sure that this is b and not c that's because the absolute difference between the second and third element has to be less than equal to b not c right so let me submit the code and let's see what's the output so yes we are able to solve this problem using this particular approach and this is pretty efficient so this is actually o of n square using o of n space complexity and i know that this is a bit complex to understand and if you found any step which is really hard to understand then make sure that you put it in the comment box and i will try to answer it for you and that's it for this video guys if you like this video then make sure that you hit that like button if you and if you are not subscribed to my channel then make sure that you subscribe to my channel as well and i will see you guys in the next video thank you for watching this video guys